Good morning, friends. The Indian Bar Association, the Advocates Association of India, uh, which has its head office in Fort Mumbai, has registered a complaint against Justice Rohington Falinariman, and it has addressed this to the Chief Justice of India with copy to all judges of. supreme court all judges of the high court all state bar councils and bar council of india and all law colleges in india the subject is taking action under section 218201 etc etc read with 120b and 34 of ipc indian penal code against justice rohington fali nariman and justice vinit saran for passing an order by willful disregard disobedience and misinterpretation of the law laid out by the constitution bench of supreme court with an intention to terrorize advocates and thereby creating threat to the independence of the bar <clears throat> they are seeking immediate withdrawal of all works from justice rohington fali nariman and justice vinit saran as per the in house procedure they are seeking directions to rohin Rohington Fali Nariman and Justice Vinit Saran to resign forthwith by following the direction of Constitution Bench in K V R Swami versus Union of India, as their incapacity, fraud on power, and offences against administration of justice are in face proved. Ex face, ex face. or they are seeking sanction to applicant to prosecute justice rohington fali nariman and justice vinit saran under these ipc sections they are seeking somo to action under contempts of court act as per law laid down in cs karnan's case in 2017 Justice Markandeya Kajju's case and Rabindranath Singh versus Rajesh Ranjan case in 2010 for willful disregard of law laid down by honorable supreme court they are also referring to Vinay Chandra Mishra's case full bench judgment LP Mishra versus state full bench Laila David versus State, two thousand nine. Nidhi came and others versus State of Madhya Pradesh, etc., etc., etc. So there are a lot of uh, <clears throat> Supreme Court cases that they are relying on. Now, direction to committee appointed under in-house procedure. to make inquiry of justice rohington fali nariman and justice vinit saran on the following charges so among all the other things they are seeking they are seeking the direction to a committee appointed under the in house procedure to make inquiry against justice fali nariman and his brother judge on the following charges now what are the charges this is by the way this is a 215 page document iba complaint against justice rohington nariman um i think justice vinit saran being on the same bench falls into the same uh, complaint but basically i think he is uh, shall we say collateral damage <clears throat> so what are the charges charges are contempt of full bench of supreme court in vinay chandra mishra's case 
which mandates to follow the procedure in contempt procedure of contempt in cases against advocates okay and it mandates to frame charges frame charges and allow the respondent that is the alleged contemnor to produce defense evidence if he disputes the charges against him now very conspicuously in matthews nedumbara's case there has been no framing of charges indeed he did not know that he was being tried it is in the writ petition the hearing of the writ petition itself that uh, justice rohington fali nariman and his brother judge seem to have decided unilaterally that he is condemned he is convicted of contempt and they put this into the order second second charge lack of basic knowledge to interpret the ratio decide nd or in any case law so uh, <clears throat> this honorable bench of supreme court is um uh, alleged to have misquoted the judgment of sukhdev singh sodhi versus chief justice versus uh, teja singh to support his stand that the judge okay now what they are saying here is that the said case law said that the judge should not hear the case that is rohington nariman who was offended by the mention of his father's name cannot or should not hear the case of contempt against matthews nidambara he has to give it to some other judge to hear that is the second charge uh there are a lot of charges i am going to skip a few or i am going to move faster he uh, charge 3 don't know the basic law of criminal jurisprudence and basic law of evidence uh charge 4 is lack of basic knowledge of principles of judicial systems now this one is kind of important the judge is not allowed to use his personal knowledge knowledge without disclosing the source and without examining himself as a witness and without notifying it to the concerned parties by allowing them to put forward their views and submissions so what happened here is justice rohington nariman justice rohington nariman seems to have known from some unknown source a lot of information about advocate matthews nedumbara i mean this is pretty obvious in the judgment that he is talking about justice nedumbara's uh, conduct in before other benches of supreme court firstly secondly before debt recovery tribunal thirdly before high court bombay high court and i think some other forums also now he has he seems to have gained a lot of personal knowledge about advocate matthews nidambara and what does he do without disclosing the source in that judgment and without examining himself as a witness and without notifying it to uh, uh, matthews you know Uh, to enable him to put forward his uh, defense he has just gone and convicted him so this is another this thing uh, charge number 5 is passing adverse remarks against an advocate without hearing him on the said remarks uh, a lot of things have been said about matthews nedumbara in that judgment uh, about what is his modus operandi and how he Uh, takes hopeless uh, debtors and how he uh, browbeats the court and so many things so many kinds of charges adverse remarks have been made uh, quite you know they are the sort of remarks that can pretty much end an advocate's career these are very serious charges so without hearing him 
without giving an opportunity to uh, um, Matthews, how has Justice Rohington Nariman leveled these charges and passed such adverse remarks in a judgment? Trying a case where he is disqualified due to personal bias. Contempt of Honorable Supreme Court judgment in Devinder Pal Singh Bular's case. Now, he has a personal bias against <clears throat> Advocate Matthews for two reasons. Number one, there was a Delhi High Court uh, writ, uh, writ petition filed by Matthews where he said that Fali Nariman should not appear before Supreme Court at all, before any uh, bench of Supreme Court at all, not just before a bench where Fali Nariman, uh, where Rowington Nariman is a part. Now, there is enough reason to believe that this would have uh, caused a personal bias to arise in the mind of Rohington Nariman. You know, there is enough, uh, I mean, if you just apply your common sense, you can see that there is going to be a personal bias. Now, when there is going to be a personal bias, why did Rohington Nariman hear such a case? He was disqualified due to personal bias. That is what charge number 6 is saying. Charge number 7 says <clears throat> it proved to be non-conducive and uh, product, counterproductive to the administration of justice. Does not have basic qualities of observance of constitutional values. Respect for independence of bar and mutual reverence. He does not believe that Lawyers' fearlessness in court, independence, uprightness, equality are the virtues which cannot be sacrificed and does not have faith in our police machinery. And trying to lower the evidentiary value attached to their official duties. I don't know what this evidentiary value etc. is about. Uh, but these are the charges. <clears throat> does not observe and maintain restraint, sobriety, moderation and reserve in the proceedings before him and falls prey to the temptation of ruining the career of an advocate. Okay, that's serious charge. Misuse of jurisdiction of Supreme Court to pass an order contrary to law with ulterior motive. To help close judge S.J. Kathawala. Now, S.J. Kathawala has also got dragged into this controversy. I am not very sure what this whole thing is about. But the charge is that Rohington Nariman and the bench consisting of no Rohington Nariman and Saran had passed that judgment with the ulterior motive to help S.J. Kathawala to save him from serious criminal charges. I will reserve comment on that because I don't know the particulars of this case. This particular case of S.J. Kathawala. Liable to pay compensation to respondent advocate for violation of Article 21 of the Constitution. Uh, <clears throat> as the advocate was convicted without framing any charges. As mandated by full bench in Vinay Chandra Mishra case. Fraud on power, charge 11. Acting against material on record and taking extraneous materials into, into consideration proves fraud on power. As ruled by full bench in Vijay Shekhar's case. I'm, I'm newly acquainted with this phrase fraud on power. So I'll have to go into the case to understand what's fraud on power. Abuse of process of court. Acting with undue haste without any urgency. Yes, what was the urgency to pass, uh, to, uh, to, to um, convict uh, Matthews Nedembara? Where was the urgency? So, yes, acting in undue haste without any urgency. <coughs> that judgment was passed in six days after the hearing. 
without any after the hearing of the writ petition it wasn't a hearing of the contempt there was no contempt petition against nedumbara so that's another unjust exercise of discretion to deprive the party of their legitimate rights guilty of contempt of honorable supreme court and liable for action um, the reference is to justice karnan's case etc acted against sections 142 of contempt of courts act and law laid down in mohammad zair khan versus vijay singh and others which casts a duty upon the judge of supreme court hearing contempt proceeding under section 14 to ask the alleged contemnor whether he wants transfer of his contempt case to be tried by another bench violation of direction of supreme court in indian performing uh, well i don't know what this it is ruled that the court should take care that hard cases should not make the bad law and it is the duty to avoid mischief injustice absurdity and anomaly while selecting out of different interpretation okay so this is the these are the uh, what how many 16 charges 16 charges leveled against justice rowington nariman and i'm going to put this document in the descriptions below the below this video and uh, i am going to not read the whole thing because the arguments are going to be too lengthy and we are this video is already 16 minutes long but i am going to look for a selection of things to read uh this is talking about judicial authoritarianism is what the proceedings in the instant case smack of okay it says it must be remembered that it is the duty of every member of the legal fraternity to ensure that the image of the judiciary is not tarnished and its respectability are eroded which means it's not just the duty of the advocates it is the duty of the judge also to ensure that the image of judiciary is not tarnished and its respectability is not eroded judicial authoritarianism is what the proceedings in the instant case smack of <clears throat> all actions of a judge must be judicious in character erosion of the credibility of the judiciary in the public mind for whatever reasons is the greatest threat to the independence of the judiciary so this is another uh, thing it is needless to say that judges cannot become uh what's the this thing become the law unto themselves nor can they expect others to obey such illegal orders which have been passed by them purely on their whim, whims and fancies so yeah i think we have gone on long enough we have, we have examined the um this case and various aspects of the case earlier also and i just wanted to point out that this is now the official view or pretty much an official view within a very large uh, part of the legal fraternity that justice rohington nariman and his brother judge on that bench went seriously overboard in that controversial judgment they were they overreached themselves they seem to have gone beyond the bounds of judicial propriety that's the larger point being made there are many components to that but that is the larger point being made here so thank you very much for listening and have a great day ahead